in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the lord be with you the lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to john said to one another who can this be even the wind and, and the sea those things obey him. to worship god and to love on him and this very church exists take this altar in its heart and eat it so we can gather around for this is my body which will be given up for you
Gott. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Mass today, too. And welcome to anyone watching our live stream channel, and especially maybe to anyone who's here for the first time also. Uh, during the homily um, slot, Tony, who's a parishioner, is going to speak to us a little bit again today about prayer, which is a way of accompanying God. And in the gospel, we hear how they accompanied Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration and their lives were changed. As we begin our mass together, let's, for those times when we stop accompanying God in our lives, let us seek his forgiveness. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here am I, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering and on, a mount, on a mountain I will point out to you. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he stretched out his hand and seized a knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me, your son, your only son. Then, looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught, caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it, offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks, because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son. I will shower blessings upon you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. With me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God, who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace had already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus. He abolished death <coughs> and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. From the bright cloud, the Father's voice was heard. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking to him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order, tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now um, Tony's going to give us some reflection um, on the gospel and prayer. Good morning, everybody. I was just listening to that gospel reading and um, it talks about Jesus taking his disciples to the top of a tall mountain where they can go and pray and it sounds really lovely. I've been asked to come and talk to you about some of the practicalities of how we can pray here in Tamworth and I was thinking, it'd be great to go to the top of a mountain to pray. Um, we don't have any mountains in Tamworth, so it doesn't really speak to my experience. Other than the snow dome, I was thinking, but I don't know if it's quite the same thing. So um, it's great if you've got a mountain, but it's not strictly necessary, not always possible. Okay, I want to introduce myself by saying I'm not a prayer expert. First of all, I'm just a member of the congregation, just like you. And um, I've only been a Christian about five years or so, and I'm not here to teach you about prayer. Uh, you've probably all got a lot of things you could teach me. Uh, I'm just here to share my experience and the things that I'm learning. Um, there's a testimonial element to this, though, because I came to faith through prayer, so I'd just like to share that with you. Um, a few years ago, I was going through like a really dark, difficult period in my life, like a lot of us go through, right? But I was an atheist at the time, and I felt like I'd sort of exhausted all the other means of support that I could have had, so... One day I thought, well, what about if I try praying to this thing that I've heard people talking about called God? 
So I did get on my knees and I put my hands together the way that I'd only seen on the television and I prayed to God and I asked for help. And to cut a very, very long story short, that was the beginning of my relationship with God. And I could say a lot about that. So if you, if you want to know more, please, you know, if you see me sometime, then um, I can talk about that. But, you know, it wasn't easy for me to get down on my knees and pray that day because I'd always been led to believe that all the burdens of life were mine to bear and all the responsibility of life was mine. So it was a very difficult and humbling experience to get down and admit that, um, admit our weakness. And that's one of the things we do when we pray. We humble ourselves before God and, and we admit our weakness. I've since learned that that is one of the things we do, so I feel a little bit better about that. The reason for saying it, though, is because I just want to emphasize to all those of you who are raising children, it's really important that you give them not only confidence in God, but also the confidence to pray to God, to ask for help, because it can be difficult, but it's really important that you do that because we do need prayer in our lives and we also need the confidence to use it. Sometimes doesn't it seem like we pray and we don't hear anything back? We wonder why we don't get an answer. Certainly sometimes that's my experience. People write all books about this and I've read a few and I don't really understand it all, but Recently, I was reading a book written by Alex's auntie, and you all know Alex who works here at the church. Her, her auntie was a nun in an enclosed order, and she wrote something that really shifted my thinking on prayer, so I want to share that with you. What she said in her book was that when we pray, we often think that it's us going to God to start the conversation, but she says it's always God who speaks to us first asking us to put our faith and our trust in him first. So it's God who initiates the conversation. It might think, it, sorry, it might help you to think of prayer as not like a normal conversation with questions and answers, even though you know, we often use words. Prayer is an acknowledgement of our faith. And I think that between us and God, that conversation, it takes the form, it's more like an embrace than a regular conversation. In prayer, God is always holding us, and you know that when you hold somebody and when you hug somebody, you don't always need words. You know, a lot can be said without words. So to look at a few practical things then in Tamworth. Whenever I read anything about how to develop a good prayer life, one thing I always come across is how important a routine can be. And it's not always as easy as saying, okay, I'm going to give myself half an hour every morning to prayer, because personally, my life doesn't always run to a strict routine. It might not be that you can find time alone in a quiet room or on the top of a mountain, but there may be some part of your day that remains fixed. So think about what routines you already have in your life. If your commute to work is an hour or so, work around that. I don't just mean praying for green lights or parking spaces or praying for forgiveness for not forgiving a person that's just cut you up in traffic. You know, you can pray whole rosaries whilst you're driving. You can pray along to the Hallow app that you can put on your stereo. I'll talk about that in a bit. How about two minutes of prayer whilst you're brushing your teeth? Have you ever thought about that? You know, 15-minute prayers, they're not more pleasing to God than 30-second prayers. So do what you can. If you build a daily habit of prayer through regular practice, maybe this is what St. Paul meant when he wrote that we should pray without ceasing in his letter to the Tamworthians, to the Thessalonians. You know, another good way of praying regularly, whether it's with your children or your partner, your friends or your family, is praying grace at mealtimes. I don't know how many of you do that. Obviously, it's a fairly new thing for me. So why not say to your family, right, every night this week, we're going to pray grace before meals and see what that leads to, see how that builds. You know, all you have to say is all good things come from you, Lord, thanks for this food, amen. You could, if you've got children, you know, you could get them to write something out in advance, you could stick it on the fridge. Take the opportunity to create a regular prayer practice around a regular meal time. Children love to learn. They love to get good at things. They love to show you what they're getting good at. So please involve them and encourage them to become confident 
in their faith. Once you get an idea of when you're going to pray, it can be difficult and we can get stuck on what we're going to say. I've got so many different things swimming around in my brain all the time. It can be difficult to to settle it down when the time comes to talk to God. So I've got three suggestions. First of all, there's the Walk With Me booklets that I'm sure most of you have seen, and you can find them when you come into either of the churches. These have a, a daily scripture reading and a reflection in them and a number of liturgical prayers. And you can work through those each day. And they're all geared towards getting you into a mindset of your own personal petitions to God. So they're really good. Pick one of those up. Second, we've got this thing called the internet, don't we? So you only have to Google the words daily prayer and you will find dozens of websites that can give you a daily scripture reading, a daily reflection, daily prayers that you can work along with. Right, finally, most of you now will have heard of this Hello app that you can download onto your phone. And if you download it via the QR code that you get on the newsletter that we hand out, you will get a discounted subscription for three months. So yes, you do have to pay for it. But there is so much content on there, it is worth exploring. They've got morning and evening prayers on there. You have readings from the lives of the saints. Um, there's meditations, there's a daily Lectio Divina, if you've ever done one of those, where you're guided through a gospel passage and you're, imag- uh, you're asked to imagine yourself inside the story. Now, the advantage of being guided like this, using an app or, or even a prayer group, of course, is as opposed to doing it by yourself, is that you have to take it at their pace So you're following them, and I personally find it easier to sit in a space of prayer that's been created by somebody else than to try and make my own from scratch when I've got a thousand other things pressing on my brain. The app also offers you notifications, so each day you get a bing, hey, it's time to pray today. So this can be a blessing, and this can also be a curse, I do understand that. Uh, But for some people, it can be really useful to help keep you on track Uh, and recognize that we just completed a full week of prayer. And this, of course, will help us instill good habits and help us build the routine. Okay, that's enough from me. I hope that you found some of what I've shared useful or thought-provoking. If you see me around and you have any tips of your own, then I'd love you to say hello and tell me what works for you. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Having listened to the words of Jesus, confident in the Father's tremendous love for us, we turn to him and pray. For the whole church that all Christians will listen to the voice of Jesus and faithfully follow him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, for economists and politicians, that God's radiant light will shine on them and that they will bring true peace with justice to their people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the work of CAFOD, our Catholic aid agency, that through its service, People in need all over the world will experience our support. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all candidates for the sacraments and for the members of our own community, 
that this holy season of Lent may be a time of grace for each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they will be comforted by the healing presence of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who died recently, including Michael Clancy, Mark Anthony Fagan, Peter Sharrett, and Bill Willis, may the Lord receive them into his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mary, the Holy Mother of God, to pray for us and with us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence we approach our loving Lord with our personal petitions. Heavenly Father, from the dazzling cloud, you reveal Jesus in glory as your beloved Son. Hear and answer our prayers. Enlighten us with the bright glory of your presence. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. prayer time with God can nourish, nurture and sustain us. If we open our hearts and lives to hearing his voice this week, let us open ourselves to the beacon of light so that we may hear God speaking to us. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. This morning's Mass is being offered for Bridie Spicer and Patrick Keogh. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your grace, gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred pastoral feasts with the joy of minds made pure, 
so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your children. And so with angels and archangels and all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. As God's children, we pray to the Father as the Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us after each other decide peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And well done to Tony on uh, that little reflection there after the gospel. It was really uh, inspiring for me, and I'm sure it was for you too. If you want to hear it again, you can always go on to um, the, the YouTube channel or just come to the 12 o'clock mass. So... Uh, <laughs> Well done, well done, Tony. Um, it's just related to that with prayer. There are rosary beads now available. They're quite um, low cost and Bibles as well. If you haven't got a, a Catholic Bible at home, they're available on the way out on the left there. Um, one of the things I've put on the news, newsletter, we don't often talk about it, and I've sent an email about it, is the whole issue of abortion which is always a really tricky issue, especially when it can seem like you're being hard on mums in difficult circumstances. But as you know, St. John's House, we, they're accommodated their mums in difficult circumstances, where they have their babies and they're encouraged as young parents. And I think as a church, we need to do that. But a recent thing came out in the week, which is lovely, and that is that women who've had miscarriages now have the right to have that child sort of registered and given a certificate to acknowledge the existence of that baby who died while maybe in the mother's womb. And I guess what the church is saying, that every baby in a mother's womb is of great value. That's one of the things we're really saying. And um, there's le new legislation coming in which would allow the abortion of a child up to a few days before birth. Um, and in the rest of Europe, 12 weeks is the limit. In 22 of the European countries, it's 12 weeks. In Britain, it's 24 and moving really towards full term. And I think we just sometimes need to make our voices heard, not in condemning anyone, but in protecting that child. And there are cards you can use. I think it's probably better to write to your, to your MP, but um, those cards also are there, which you can use. Take one on the way out and fill it in um, and at least the least we can do is that and to pray for those children who often um, have no voice. Today's second collection is for more vulnerable people um, in the Cafod collection after our fasting on Friday. So please um, know you, you're always very generous with that. Please be generous with it as well um, today. There are tickets available for the cultural evening. That's coming up really soon. It's a really great evening. So, and all we're asking for is a donation towards um, our food hub, five pounds for adults and three pounds for children. And then you get that ticket and you can wander around getting food from different cultures. And then the born for this rehearsals have been going really well. And I've heard lovely things. And um, that is being presented in only about three to four weeks, four weeks time. And those tickets are also available today where the Bibles and rosary beads are. And again, we're just asking for a donation, which I think is going towards CAFOD. Is that right? Um, and how much is the donation? Two pounds, just suggesting a two pounds donation or whatever you wish towards CAFOD. If you haven't got the money, just take a ticket, but then they're available on the left. And we really want the church to be packed for that as well because um, it's a great way of preparing for... Uh, for Easter. There are teas and coffees after Mass, I think, downstairs and upstairs. So um, if you've got children, um, you're welcome to go upstairs where they can play together. And uh, there's also teas and coffees downstairs if you haven't. Have I missed anything out? You any more? Any young people want to do reading? See Alex after Mass. Hey, good lad. Alex is over there. You have a chat with her. And any other young people as well. Be great. Well done. What does young count up till? Uh, don't answer it, Alex, you're getting into trouble. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.